just the intensity of the politics in a countercultural queer context was just mind-boggling. But there was a fairly tight community of people who, again, who I would categorize as being part of this political, countercultural, alternative, hippie, gay scene at that point. And we all sort of wound up at the same places. And I concocted these little Super 8 shorts, and I would get them developed at Harvey Milk's camera store. That's kind of where the headquarters of everybody that got their films, Super 8 films developed, was in the neighborhood. So I would meet all these other filmmakers. And there was a little, cute little clerk <laughs> that took all the orders named Danny Nicoletta. The way the store was set up, it, it was encouraged to sit around and, and chat, you know. And so you'd, you'd drop off your film. I would be behind the counter. I would write it up. And I'd ask you what you were up to, and you would share what your content was. Beyond the fact that it was a business, it was really the um, sort of the hubbub of political action and activity in, in the neighborhood. We were all sharing knowledge, we were sharing resources, and then we decided to have an exposition of our, the fruits of our labor, mostly for each other, but we happened to do flyers and we happened to invite the community. And it was an idea whose time had come. They all showed up in droves, really. Because we were also seeing a lot of films coming from the public sector that we admired, and so we wanted to sort of insert ourselves into that larger dialogue, whether that was Warhol or Rosa von Prauheim from Germany. You know, we were not unaware that there was other things happening in other cities. And there was really no venue to do that at that point. And so I'm like, well, um, we can do a show. There's a 32 Page Street, which is a local community uh, center. And I don't think it's a lot of money to, to rent. And and it was a long, narrow top floor of a building, and it was basically a dance studio. I remember we were all seated on the floor, cross-legged, looking up at a big sheet. That was my bed sheet that was actually uh, uh, iron, but not really well ironed. I submitted, I got rejected, but I still went. You know, it sort of felt like what my summer camp experience was when I was, you know, not much younger than I was then. And I was completely blown away by Mark's films. I mean, first of all, watching him project them was really fascinating because he was very agitated. And of course, it was completely impossible to synchronize Super 8 and cassettes. It came from my love of old movies combined with the philosophies that we had of you know, loving the great goddess and the earth and the elements and the spirits and everything. All of a sudden, we're supposed to be fucking, you know, butch guys with muscles and brown hanky in the right and red hanky in the left. All of that stuff. I'm like, oh, brother. <laughs> that was one of the big things about Strange Fruit was sort of a rebellion against this masculine thing that was coming into our community. Yeah, I think you should work out. I think you could get into it. Well, you know, those Strange Fruit shows were live theater mixed with film, and they were sort of nice new forms of hybridization. People were so repressed of trying to express themselves emotionally, which I thought was the root of being gay, was that we were able to do that. We were offering uh, a believing mirror context back to the community to have that sort of two-way conversation about our, our identities. I got into the biggest fights with Harvey about everything. He came to the first one. We had a rule at the film festival there would be no tobacco smoking. It would be only pot smoking. He thought that that was fascist. He's like, what's the difference between tobacco smoking and, and pot smoking? I'm like, tobacco is a poison and pot is fabulous. <laughs> Those of us who are making films at the level of the Gay Film Festival then, it was much more of a kind of underground sensibility. Whereas the word is that was kind of its own beast at that time because it was such a big project. It was funded by public television. So we knew it was gonna be going out to the mainstream in that sense, but it was going out to the mainstream as a presentation of this is who we are. 
That was really the beginning of a, any kind of gay identified film community. I accept the responsibility of being a gay person, you know, and it's not as, as a part of my identity. I'm not ashamed of that. It was interesting when you look at the program of the festival, there was the seeds of everything that went on to be gay film. There was experimental work, there was animation work, there was personal work, there was drag queen work. There was a little bit of everything. It's not the same for a young gay person who's coming out and who really wants to experience being gay. It's not the same for them to move to LA or New York. They can be gay there, but it's not about being gay in the way it is to come to the Castro, to come to the Gay Film Festival at Frame Line, and to have that intense, concentrated focus of we are queer and we are having this community experience together. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Mm -hmm.